prime time local news serving the lakeland and midwest regions good evening and welcome to prime time local news one more person who tested positive for COVID 19 in saskatchewan has died it was someone in the 80 plus age group in our northwest zone the government is opening the vaccine booking system up to everyone aged 40 years and over starting tomorrow there are 205 new cases in the province with 11 in the northwest Almost all of them, nine in total, are in the immediate Lloydminster area, where we have 97 active cases. 2,408 cases are considered active in Saskatchewan, with 189 in the northwest. 186 people are in hospital, with six in the northwest. To date, 185 cases in our zone are variants of concern. Close to 422,000 vaccine doses have been administered in Saskatchewan, with close to 30,000 of those in our zone. Lloydminster City Council has agreed to share the cost of a culvert installation with RM of Britannia. Jace Mackey has more on the project and why Lloydminster is covering half of the cost. The RM of Britannia reached out to the City of Lloydminster to discuss sharing the cost of a culvert installation at Range Road 3273 east of the city in early 2020. The RM wanted the city to share the cost because a large amount of the stormwater that runs through the system comes from Lloydminster. That water moves each spring and every major event through that complex when when it rains snow melts and things like that city administration wanted the rm of britannia to provide documents such as engineering drawings and landowner notifications before agreeing to co-fund the project the rm did not provide the city with the information and continued ahead with the project then in march 2021 the rm revisited the idea of cost sharing and provided the city with the documentations for the project City administration supported the co-funding request. We have an interest in the roads to the perspective that we have to be a good neighbor. That water would be significantly less if there wasn't that complex. That complex serves the city, serves the county of Vermilion River, serves the RM of Wilton to the south with drainage. That comes through the city and it definitely grows with the city and comes out in the northeast. City Council approved the agreement and will contribute over $73,000 to the project. A caveat was added that co-funding requests going forward must have more collaboration and input from the city to ensure the project meet the city standards and practices. They went from three culverts to two but larger capacity so they improved the hydraulics of the culverts capacity which is very important to move that water as quick as possible because you don't want to back up water onto roadways that softens up roads at certain times and things like that. So it's important that we, we step up and certainly we appreciate the partnership we have with our respective rural municipalities and county and we'll continue to work with them on projects that are beneficial for both parts. For Primetime Local News, I'm Jace Mackey. With the weather starting to get warm, the risk of encountering rodents is up and so is the risk of contracting the hantavirus from deer mice. Connor Chan has more on some of the health risks and how to protect yourself. The hantavirus is an issue every spring with warm weather on the rise. The virus itself can be fatal, but can present itself with flu-like symptoms and other serious health problems. So it starts off with you'll have headaches, you might have fever, you'll have respiratory symptoms. But if you progress towards hantavirus pulmonary syndrome, which is the final stages of the disease, your, your blood pressure will start dropping, you'll have lung congestion, and you'll have severe respiratory failure as well. In a COVID-19 world, there can be confusion between the two viruses. However, the important thing is if you do start feeling any flu-like symptoms, is to go see your doctor right away. So how would you know if you've gotten antivirus infection or you've got COVID-19? So I think the, 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 the really important part is you want to know if you've come in contact with rodents or if you've come in contact with a place that's been infested with rodents. Because right now, because we live in, we're living in a COVID-19 pandemic, there has to be differential diagnosis to identify if you've gotten COVID-19 or you've gotten hantavirus infection. While there is no licensed vaccine for the hantavirus, there are preventable measures people should follow, like wearing the right protective gear and avoiding dry sweeping or vacuuming in enclosed buildings or any other equipment that has been stored away for winter. So perhaps you could use damp sweeping or you could use bleach to decontaminate before you start sweeping up rodent poop and rodent urine as well. So if you know, if, you, there's, if there is evidence of rodent infestation, you want to be extremely careful going into these areas and start cleaning up. 
since 1994, only 12 cases in Saskatchewan resulted in a fatality from the hantavirus. More information on what to look for can be found on the Government of Saskatchewan's website. Connor Chan, Primetime Local News. A grade 8 student from Bishop Lloyd Middle School recently placed in the top 10 in a competition put on by the Battle River Watershed Alliance. And now her ideas will start to make a difference in the community. The competition is called Caring for Our Watersheds. The students were presented with the question, what can I do to improve my watershed? Mahin Mangla submitted a 1,000 word essay describing her idea where she finished in seventh place. The main point of my project was um, waste management and taking all the resources that are being wasted and execute them into good use. Since she placed seven, she won $450 for herself and for the school. In Mahin's essay, she described a four-step process that could bring a positive change. Collect um, local agricultural runoff from local farmers, uh, produce from, our, from Walmart, and make that into a natural compost. And with that compost, we were going to grow a class garden at Bud Miller All Seasons Park. And then the vegetables that grow, we would have donated them to um, the local food bank. Students are learning more about the environment and how to preserve it, which helps set them up for years to come. It gives them just, you know, practical skills for the future uh, in dealing with uh, land reclamation, caring for environment, fighting, you know, climate change. And uh, it's their world that they're going to inherit. So sooner they can start, you know, making a positive change for the environment, the better they're going to be. With the ideas from Mahin's essay, the school will now be implementing them so the students can have a hands-on learning experience. And with uh, some grants that we got and Mahin's money that she won, we're going to do a local uh, garden right here at school. So the kids will be planting the, the vegetables and caring for the vegetables and harvesting them in the fall. And Mahin's happy that her ideas can inspire some change. It means a lot because I didn't think I would get this far and now I'm pretty excited since my idea is going to be implemented in the next few weeks. They will also be growing sage and sweetgrass in the garden so they can work with local elders and knowledge keepers in the community and use it in ceremonies at the school. Now our Connor Chan will take a first look at your weather forecast. Well, thanks very much, Jasmine. Looking outside today, a little bit chilly once again as we see a high of six degrees and lots of cloud coverage. And you'll see a big dramatic change for tomorrow as we are expected to be in the 20s tomorrow. So it goes from single digit cooler day to very warm Friday to kick things off for the weekend here. But take a look to other temperatures in the area. Lots of sevens in Vermilion, St. Paul, Bonneville, eight degrees in Cold Lake with six up there in Lac La Biche, 14 in Edmonton, so fairly warm over out west there. 13 for Provost and Macklin and 8 degrees in North Battleford. 8 also we see that in Meadow Lake and St. Wahlberg with 6 degrees up in Isle of Cross and 9 in Green Lake. There are some areas that have some precipitation. It's making its way out east and we are going to see that ourselves as well. We see a little bit of cloud coverage still hovering over around that Lloydminster area and then carrying over from the southwest, carrying over up to the northern parts here in Alberta. So we are going to see a little bit more cloud coverage mostly on Saturday and a little bit on tomorrow, but we are going to see a little bit more sun in the forecast for tomorrow. But looking to North Battleford, for overnight three degrees as they drop to that as they go to 23 degrees tomorrow with the daytime high. So again, lots of temperature shifts, uh, dramatic temperature shifts we'll see here in the immediate Lakeland areas for tomorrow. Two degrees overnight in Cold Lake with that same cloud coverage going into 19 degrees tomorrow with the west with the winds coming in from the northwest west at 22 kilometers an hour. So it could be a little bit chillier than that, but not too, too bad. And then for us here, we drop two degrees overnight at four is what we're expecting. And then 22 will be our daytime high for tomorrow with a little bit more cloud coverage and a little bit of sun, not a whole lot. But as we look ahead to the next three days, there is a good chance we'll see some showers all weekend long with a high of 15 degrees for Saturday with a 55% chance of that rain occurring and then 11 degrees on Sunday as we'll see a little bit of sun coming up and then the winds will also pick up a little bit there with a 60% chance of some rain and then we will probably see a stoppage there and then we'll see a little bit of normal temperatures and normal cloud and sun mixes starting on the Monday throughout the rest of the week. That is a look at your weather for now. We'll have more prime time local news after the break.
After a 2020-21 season that barely got off the ground, the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League are starting preparations for the 2021-22 season. Evan Kenny has more on what this will mean for teams and fans next year. The 2020 SJHL season was a memorable one, but not for the right reasons. Six games was the most any team played, with the Battlefords North Stars and the Flin Flon Bombers only playing three and two respectively. You didn't know what to think. You didn't, you know, obviously, uh, you know, everyone had their doubts if it was going to go or, or not. And, you know, obviously at the end when it was, you know, canceled, it's obviously disappointing for, you know, the players and the staff and everyone involved, right? And fellow coaches around the league would agree. After starting the season on November 6th, the league saw 29 total games before being paused on November 25th. Overall, you know, right when we got shut down last year, we really didn't know where the where the future was, was going. You know, I think overall, you knew you didn't know if you'd start, you didn't know when you'd start, yeah, you, you didn't know what was going to happen with restrictions all the time and everything like that. Now, the league and teams will look to get back to hockey as they know it. You can sense that we're getting close to, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel, I feel like. The players are going to wait and see, I think. For me to say that, hey, it's going to be normal, and they're, they're going to wait and see what, you know, when we get approved. I think that's, a, you know, first and foremost is, you know, there's probably going to be a little bit of, you know, a little bit of, you know, I guess second guessing of it until that happens. So, you know, we got to get that approval as quick as possible. The SJHL and Saskatchewan government will continue to work on safety protocols for next season. SJHL President Bill Chow is optimistic there will be fans in the stands for next year. However, masking and social distancing may still be in effect. Evan Kenny, Primetime Local Sports. The NFL Draft is slated for today. That's when the first round goes down. Unless a team goes way off the board, Sherwood Park's Chuba Hubbard won't be selected in the first round. Hubbard is projected to go somewhere around the fourth round, which suits him just fine. Global's John Sexsmith reports. It doesn't matter whether I go first round or whether I go seventh round, you know, just blessed to be in this situation. It was only six years ago when Chuba Hubbard was starring for the Bev Facey Falcons. Soon the Oklahoma State Cowboy will be drafted to the NFL. Is he nervous, excited? More so just ready. Um, you know, everybody asks that question and, and my nerves, excited, all these different things. I mean, definitely a bunch of different emotions going on right now, but I've been working towards this my whole life. So yeah, just more so ready. Two by two on that. How good are you? Hubbard wrapped up a stellar college career at OSU in 2020. It was a tough season with COVID-19 being the leading tackler. Chuba, Chuba, touchdown. In 2019, Hubbard was one of the top running backs in the nation. He led the NCAA with 2,094 yards and was a finalist for the Doak Walker Award as the top rusher in college football. It begs the question, should he have declared for the NFL draft a year earlier? People ask me that question all the time. You know, do you wish you had left last year and all this stuff? And, you know, the answer is no. You know, I live with, you know, no regrets. I came back to get my degree. I graduate next week. Um, and I came back to win a national championship with my teammates. You know, obviously I wasn't able to do that, but, you know, it's just how life goes. Hubbard has been training in California for the last four months or so. It's been a different lead up to the draft with no combine. Hubbard said he has done too many Zoom interviews to count and has spoken to every NFL team. And he's had to answer the odd wacky question or two along the way. What would, um, if your mom could change anything about you, what would she change? And I was just kind of like, that's my mom. She, she, she's not going to change anything, you know. <laughs> she loves me, so she thinks I'm perfect. That's what I told her. So. Hubbard's immediate goal is to play in the NFL. But down the road, what about ever suiting up in the CFL? I definitely consider it hard for me to say, you know, what, what will happen in the future or anything like that. But, yeah, I definitely consider it. Now our Connor Chan will take another look at your weather forecast.
All right, thanks very much, Jasmine. Looking at our temperatures, we're still sitting around the single digit mark at seven degrees, and we take a look out west. Well, they are not as cold as we are. They're much warmer. 16 degrees out in Edmonton, as well as in Jasper. 20 degrees for Red Deer right now. 19 in Edson and in Rocky Mountain House. 13 degrees for White Court, and then we see a little bit cooler temperatures in Athabasca, sitting at six degrees right now. Taking a look to Saskatchewan, also kind of in the similar mild temperatures right now, with six uh, nine degrees in North Battleford and Saskatoon. 10 degrees for Prince Albert. Eight in Meadow Lake and then 11 in Melford. Now take a look to temperatures up north. It's definitely warming up a little bit compared to, to earlier in the week where they were still in the minuses for most of those cities. Five degrees in the Lush in Buffalo Narrows right now. Seven in LaRange. We see minus one in Uranium City. Stony Rapids sitting at an even zero. Minus two for Walston Lake. Two for South End and then six degrees in Flin Flon. Looking to the northern Alberta temperatures right now. Five degrees in Slave Lake. Ten for Fort McMurray with three in Fort Chippewain. Seven degrees for high level. Six degrees for Peace River and fairly warm temperatures in Grand Prairie sitting at 18 degrees. Looking to southern Alberta, also very warm as well as we see lots of 20 degrees here as we see that in Medicine Hat and Calgary at 20 and 22 degrees. 19 degrees for Lethbridge and if you, if you want to count, if you want to round that up, they could be sitting at the 20 degree mark as well. 15 for Banff, 16 in Coronation right now. Now as we take a look to the southern Saskatchewan areas, we see 15 in Swift Current, 14 for Kindersley with 12 degrees in Moose Jaw, and then 10 for both Regina and York and then we look ahead to Estevan, we see a nice 16 degrees. Now we see a little milder temperatures as well, at least in Winnipeg sitting at 15. The cloud coverage is still continuing on throughout most of the country. 11 degrees in Toronto with some showers right now. 15 in Quebec City. We see 6 degrees in St. John's with some single digits and then 14 in Halifax where there is a little less cloud coverage than the rest of the country. Looking at Vancouver also sitting at 16 degrees with some of that same cloud coverage. Minus 3 all the way up in Yellowknife and then we look at Whitehorse with some showers right now at four degrees. Now taking a look to tomorrow, as I mentioned, it is going to be a dramatic change as we are going to be in the 20s tomorrow. 22 is our expected uh, day, uh, daytime high, excuse me, and that is the temperature we will see around the area here in Vermilion, Lloydminster, Mar Wayne, Wainwright, as well as in Maidstone. 20 degrees for Vegreville and St. Paul, 19 up in Bonneville and Cold Lake and Lacklebish tomorrow. Uh, 23 degrees for North Battleford and then Macklin sitting at 24 tomorrow. And then we'll see 21s all in the northern Saskatchewan areas like St. Wahlberg, Meadow Lake, and Green Lake as well. Now take a look to the next seven days. We are going to see some showers starting possibly Friday night, carrying over into Saturday, where we will see a 55% chance of some rain throughout the day with a high of 15 degrees, and that'll carry over once again into Sunday with a high of 11. Going into Monday, the rain will stop there at a high of 13 with uh, some, uh, sun and cloud mixes throughout the day, and that'll be the result for the coming days ahead there, but with a high of 14 on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then a high of 15 there on Thursday. That is a look at your seven day forecast. We'll have more prime time local news coming up after the break. I'm joined here today with Joey Wamler with R&D Plumbing and Heating. What's this company planning to do to help with pitch in week? Oh, we're just going to do a garbage pit on uh, 12th Street there. I've just noticed once I drive by that street, it's got lots of litter out there. We're just hoping to do a big cleanup on that from 50th Ave all the way to 75th we're trying to do today. And do you hope to make this an annual initiative that R&D Plumbing and Heating does for a pitch and week each year in the future? Yeah, it's kind of something that I just came across on social media, just seeing that the City of Lloyd added out on their website that they have this pitch and week that's kind of new to me or whatever. So yeah, it might be something that we do annually just to keep it going. And will there be other residents joining you so far for tonight? Yeah, we're actually going to book off the whole crew and hopefully we can get the majority of the company out there. We're probably going to hit, hopefully hit 20 people or so, hopefully, and hit the ditches and start picking. And for people wanting to join in, where can they find more information online to be able to know where you guys will be and what time and everything? Um, I'm not sure on that. The City of Lloyd Minster website has the pitch and week thing. You can go on there and register stuff on there and I think let them know that way. And do you believe there's been lots of support with pitch and week throughout the community so far from what you've seen? That I don't really know. I don't think so because once you drive around, you do notice lots of garbage. You don't notice many people out there. I don't, I seen a guy actually today picking bottles out on a road ditch, but he was just doing the bottle picking. Mm -hmm. And how long do you all plan to be cleaning up outside in that area for tonight? How long do you think it'll be? Hopefully no more than a couple hours. I think we have the manpower to do it and we should hit a couple kilometers. It should only take a couple hours to do that, hopefully. 
And are there any other initiatives you plan to do for Pitch and Week this year? Or is your company planning for other initiatives for next year's Pitch and Week? Oh, maybe just pick up in another area somewhere. I just I just drive 12th Street lots. So I just noticed that that was pretty heavily garbaged and maybe we'll do something else next year. See how it goes this year. We might be able to tackle more kilometers, depends on how fast this one goes. And how do you personally believe that other people in the community can help support more with Pitch and Week here? That'd be some that hopefully everybody else, like other businesses, everybody that realizes that's in the construction that drives around, that is part of building houses and whatever else, that some of that stuff's coming across from just your normal area. So maybe other companies will jump in and do something like that too. And why do you believe it's important for you and your company to do this tonight for Pitch and Week? Oh, it's just something that we're just involved in the community lots. We support the community. The community, community supports us lots. I got a young family. It's just a good example, too, for people just to see, like, it, does, it doesn't take much time to do. Just go out there. It doesn't have to be two hours. It can be 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever, and you can pick as much as you want. You don't have to go crazy. And is there anything else you'd like to add for people to know about for what you're doing tonight? No, not really. I don't know. Just if you want to help your community and you have some spare time, just go out and pick up some garbage. That's all it takes. Perfect. Well, I hope lots of people are able to sign up and help out with this initiative tonight. Thank you so much for joining me today. No problem. I'm joined now with Australian author VK Tritzler and your new book, A Town Called Nowhere, was released on Friday, but where did the inspiration for this book come from? So this started, um, it was kind of a, a twofold thing. Firstly, I've got lots of friends who are authors and um, we're playing what for authors is a game. It's kind of like poker game where you have different cards and it's got different bits of information in it and then you randomly pull them out and you have to assign it into a story. And so I'd pulled out these cards and I'd kind of pieced together the first chapter of a book and I was kind of happy with it, but not thrilled. And I was watching TV that night and there was a, a thing on TV about how there's people that believe that there's panthers roaming around Australia. Um, Australia doesn't naturally have big cats, so I'm not sure how they think they got there. I don't know, circus release or something. And uh, and I kind of thought, oh, that'd be kind of fun if I could take the start of the story that I had and then turn them from being human into being able to change into panthers. So that that's really where it came from. And um, and from there, it's become its own thing. And and I remember writing it and getting kind of two thirds of the way through. And, and I was away on a writing retreat and I went out to the ladies and I said, look, I I'm not sure how I can finish this book up like it's it's um it's really busy and I I don't think I'm going to get it all finished in time I'm like oh that's fine just make it more books so <laughs> it's it's become more books it's become bigger than it was so um yeah it started out as one book it's it's now going to be three so this is the first one of the three so what can readers expect in a town called nowhere um I wanted to bring in uh I guess quite a lot of uh, intrigue and there's drama. Um, you've got two uh, protagonists who are from really different backgrounds. Um, one's very wealthy, he's escaping his fame and, and um, his obligation to his family. The other one's never had a family uh, and she finds her family in the process of, of meeting these these other um, pack members. So it's, um, it's a story uh, I guess around uh, the things that you that you do when you know when you're forming a new group and um, it's it's a whole uh, beginning start for for both of them it's a, it's a fresh start so I really wanted to to have a look and see how that would pan out for them. And you know, obviously last year was a crazy year, but you actually got the chance to release three books. So did the pandemic really have a big impact on your writing at all? Yes and no. It's I found it harder to write when I had lots of family stuff going on, um, which when you're locked down, you know, that's what happens. There's a lot more family stuff going on, um, but not particularly. Um, I think really with anything to do with my writing, I really dedicate time to it. And, and it's a priority for me to set aside that time. So um, 
yes and no. <laughs> I think my character range probably got a little less. <laughs> And with the new books you released last year and your new one now available, where do you take your inspiration from? Does it kind of come from everywhere? I think um, as much as I hate to say it, like I try not to get too heavily influenced by the people that I meet during the day, but quite often you will find yourself writing in little snippets of, of people's uh, personas, you know, somebody that you've been dealing with um, on, a, on a different level to writing the way they walk or, or something that they say or, you know, um, little snippets about how they, they're dressed, those tend to, to come through in your books unintentionally. Um, but I don't uh, deliberately go and try and uh, fit characters into a profile. Um, I, I write freely. I don't plot out a lot. So for me, a lot of it's just the inspiration that I get at the time. And if anyone is looking to get this current book and your new one's coming out, where should they go? The easiest place is my website. Uh, I keep it up to date with what's coming and going. And I do have um, a lot of things coming and going, particularly this year. Uh, so um, www.vktrichler.com. And, um, and feel free to jump on social media. I'm on there quite often. And I love to chat to people on social media. So. And is there any future project that your readers can expect? Uh, well, I've got obviously book two coming out for um, my Panther series. Um, I got some exciting things coming up. I'm, I'm attending a, a romance conference in August. So I'm going to see if I can live stream some of that for you guys. Um, and then I've, I've got a few books on the works. I can't let you have too much information on them yet, but um, I'm, I'm excited. So yeah, it, it's, it's going to be a good year. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, BK. All right, taking one last look here at your weather forecast. We go to 22 degrees tomorrow, so a very big dramatic jump from today where we've seen temperatures in the 6 to 7 degree range. Going into Saturday, Sunday, it is going to be not as great weather as we will see for Friday with showers mostly expected for Saturday. That could start Friday night carrying over into Saturday with that high of 16 degrees, and that same results will happen for Sunday with a 60% chance of some rain. 12 degrees there for Sunday as well as on Monday, but with no rain expected there in the forecast. Going into Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we will see 15 degree days for both days. We'll be back to a little bit chillier mornings with that low of minus three and minus two. And then going into Thursday to wrap up the seven days, 16 degrees is the expected daytime high there. We usually average around the temp around the 15 to 17 degree mark for our daytime highs, and usually around uh, mark um, averaging around four for our average daytime lows. Thank you for joining us on Primetime Local News. Have a great rest of your night.